Welcome back to Good Morning La La Land. We are so honored to have Ken LaCourt here today. Welcome, Ken. Thank you. How are you? Good. So Ken was a senior vice president of Fox News. Holy cow. And now you have, Ken, your, your own news station. You have a list. You have all kinds of things. Tell us what is going on. So um, I was with Fox News for, for almost 20 years. Wow. Um, um, loved that. It was part of a, of a kind of a revolutionary new thing that was out there. It was controversial. Mm -hmm. It was fun. Um, on the journalism side more than the opinion side on that. And uh, we were always very proud of our journalism. And, and I still think they do a great job on that. Uh, I was tight with Roger Ailes when that whole uh, thing mm. came and, and that senior management blew up. I was one of the guys that got blown out of that. And, uh, and it was one of the better things that happened to me. Mm. Uh, Why is that? Uh, uh, part of it is... is, is is it was at the point of my life at age 50 where it was like I, I'd always wanted to start my own deal. I, 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 I wanted to be an entrepreneur in, in the news industry for a long time. And when you're at that level of corporate politics and corporate, uh, just corporate news, it's kind of hard to, to, to make that jump. And so getting a little bit of nudge out the door, the door mm -hmm. helped it. And it just happened to be at the same time that the news media in America is kind of imploding. and and. And, and I think that it's it's a bad thing for the country of what's happening in, in, in the news world. And I think it's an opportunity for, for a new business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm so happy because I got your newsletter today, right. which is really an overview of 2017. And I was blown away with how great and how broken down it really was. So that's that's just kind of what we're what we're doing. So so we're launching a, a product that, that in probably about three or four months, which is gonna be kind of a hybrid between a news entity and if you created Facebook from scratch to deliver news. Mm. In other words, Facebook no is, 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 is <laughs> Facebook is, hmm. is is right now the biggest deliverer of news in the country, even though mm. they don't have a journalist, they don't have a reporter, mm. they don't have a uh, they don't have editors. They, they, they've created a great platform to let people come together. Mm -hmm. But my question uh, is, is it real news? I think right, most of it question. is, and that's that's the that's the difference. Is Facebook was really created to to let you see your old girlfriend and watch her photos, or see your friends, or see your cousins mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. on vacation or whatnot. I thought it was just for likes. What is <laughs> we like all that. Exactly. <laughs> and, and it's become so hugely popular that it does everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, people get news there. People get all you know. It's it's become you know a, almost a fabric of life. But for delivering a pure news product, that's a really really good question because anybody can pop a news story up. Oh, here's something from whatever.com. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I said, oh, I just got something mm -hmm. from from uh, uh, usinvestigativejournalism.com, nobody would have any idea if that was a serious organization yeah. or if it was some schmo with a, with a, with a WordPress page that right. looks great. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the problem with, with, with journalism in America. And so we have some tweaks on that in the sense that We'll have on, on this product news from everywhere, from NBC and CNN and Fox and all of that, as well as some of our own original journalism that, that, that we'll do. But we'll also have a team of editors who bring that stuff in so we can keep out the fake, the crazy bias, the, 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 the you know, the, you can do a lot of different things like mm -hmm. that. And, and unlike a news organization that, you know, even at a, even at a massive one like Fox or NBC, mm -hmm. you only really work on 50 stories a day. And only, only <laughs> for, you know, for an organization that has thousands of people, sure. that's, yeah. that's, but, 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 you know, people's, but, but one of the cool things about, about Facebook or any of these, of these, of these kind of news platforms is you might have such a radically different concept of what you find interesting in mm -hmm. news versus you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know some people who just love to get into the politics world and, yeah. and the, the economic numbers and this and that. And I know other people who are like, I don't want any of that. And, and I want... You know, I want the, the lighter fare or I want entertainment news. And so when you're pulling it in from hundreds and hundreds of sources, you can you can give people kind of a little bit more of what they're what they're looking so for. So you're offering news that's almost like tailored to what somebody might be looking for or interested so, in? You know, you always try to, you know, at, at, at a Fox when you're running, you know, we get a billion page views a month on our on our, wow. on our, billion. On our yeah, it was a lot mind blowing. Wow. So every morning though you, you try to sit down and say, Okay, let's let's make this smorgage board look good. Okay, so we have to have the important news here and then we have to have sports down here and we have to have this there. This is a, a little bit different in the sense that it will be tailored per person. So wow. it, we can literally that. track, and, and Facebook does that. I mean, that's why it's people like get so addicted to Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Right? I'm exactly. curious. So, How do you, you, but you want what, you know, you want the things you want, but there's also stuff that's like, even though you didn't know that you wanted to hear about an explosion in Tempe, mm -hmm. you also want to hear about that too. So it's, it's. How so do it's, you it's, want your news? 
asking a hard question. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, I mean, you know, I, I have particular tastes. I mean, I, I I liked following the DC the DC politics things. That's my sport. Sports can't stand. I just have no interest in sports. Didn't get into my genes. Uh, it, it just the, when the players were kneeling on the field, that was the only time I cared about football right. this year, just because that was then a political issue. I totally um, get you. Just totally. So, get you. But, some, but 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 you know, my brother-in-law's got you know he, he goes to work with his Ram right. shirt on. So so um, so I want it to be tailored to me. Look, we've got a couple issues going on. One is the fakeness of news going mm -hmm. on. And the other, and, and this is really bad, is is just how how how. The major media has become so biased and in their political camps. Mm. I mean, if you go to CNN, you know, the, an average, not crazily political person will look at CNN and it looks like the Democratic National Convention. I mean, you, you can't, I mean, it's just like they spend all day thumping Trump over the head. You go to Fox News and you don't see that. They're still thumping Hillary more than they're, they're thumping Trump. So, so part of it is I don't want to dive too much into, into a biased world. I want to see a little bit, but I don't want to be... I don't want it to be so focused on just the things that I want. I want to see things that I might not agree with or, or things that I might not have heard otherwise. The other issue is, is it, it's dumb. There's just a lot of dumb, I mean, so, one of the, so, so find myself out of a job, looking at doing the last kind of big business thing in, in, in my life. And it took a lot of time saying, one of the big questions that I had was, how did we get from the days of yellow journalism mm. in the late 1800s, early 1900s, where, you know, we all saw that and they, they were hawking all this stuff. What do you mean yellow journalism? So yellow journalism was, was a phrase that was, that was brought up. It was kind of among the newspapers in the Hearst days. This, again, this was the late 1800s, early 1900s. There were a lot of newspapers around. And they all kind of got into this, this, this making up news hardcore, kind of like what it is now, mm -hmm. uh, uh, what it's become in the last year. Uh, um, it's, it's known as kind of like the worst days of journalism because they, they, they would just Slay. often just over overplay things beyond a point of ridiculousness. Mm -hmm. And I said, how did we get from that to, back like when, we, when I grew up, it was the LA Times, and yeah, they had their, little, they had their political biases and whatnot, but, but you believed them, they weren't making things up. And a lot of it, what, what it came down to, and I figured out, was how news is distributed and, and what are the economic incentives behind it. Mm -hmm. So in 1880, the way that you sold the newspapers, you had a kid on the, on the corner with, with, with the newspapers themselves screaming out the headlines. Mm -hmm. Whoever had the most salacious headline sold wow. the most amount of, uh, yeah. amount, amount of newspapers. There was, there, was, mm -hmm. there was a lot of that. And, and so, so that actually didn't really start to change around until the early 1900s, and a lot of it was a guy named Adolph Oaks who just bought a fledgling New York Times. And they said, we're going the opposite, opposite way. Um, and and they, they did serious journalism. They, they stopped doing that, and people started to gravitate towards that. The other aspect was people started moving to the suburbs and buying subscriptions. Cool. Well, once I have you as a subscri subscriber, I don't have to sell that that hard. So you flash forward now to now with Facebook mm -hmm. and social media being the primary driver of news, okay. not only does every newspaper have to compete, every single headline competes. Mm -hmm. And so that's why when you look at something, you have a hard time believing those headlines because they're just made to make you click. And whether it's clickbait, whether it's it's appealing super hard to your political biases, yeah. or or, uh, or or in some instances, it's, it's and, and the, the fake news guys, the only reason why fake news the real fake news, uh, you know, like really, really fake news, made stuff up, is because they they could make enough money on Facebook. Because if they said Melania is pregnant, right. people click on that, and they've got their penny at that yeah. point. Yeah. They already, mm -hmm. when you went to the page, just realized, oh, okay, you got me. Uh, they already made their penny, and if they could do that enough on Facebook, they they could make mm -hmm. money. So, do you see a shift there then, to, to, in terms of the psychology of the population, where folks are much more interested? in less of the dr sort of dramatized fake news and more interested in getting sort of the facts and more interested in traditional journalism? I don't know. Yeah. That's a really good question because a lot of times we all say we want certain things. Totally. We say, yeah, oh, yeah. I, man, I, I wish I could have a big salad for dinner. Yeah, and, and, yeah. and, and you then all of a sudden there's a, there's a fried Steak. cheeseburger on yeah. there. Um, I think that the average person now realizes that there is a crazy um, ideological divide that they that they're not getting the full story when they go to mm -hmm. their to their silo. I think that there's an unease amongst peop uh, many people because they, they don't know what's real. I, I was speaking at a, at, a, at a conference and this this, you know, this gal comes, she's 22 years old, she's a college student, she's bright, and she said, you know, I, I click around and I see things, how do I know who to trust? Wow. And 
you know, I basically said, well, you know, when you've lived 20 years, you realize that, okay, the American spectator is coming from this kind of a thing, or should I trust them or not? But living an extra 20 years was a really crappy answer to that. Mm -hmm. and, 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 it was, and it really bothered me by the fact that you've got people who, who want it. So I, I, don't, I, I think that most people are still kind of going to that stuff, but I think that it's, and I wouldn't say the ship's starting to turn, but I think that a lot of people are, are for the first time saying, mm, I'm uncomfortable mm -hmm. about yes. this. And, do you think that and, that and I think there's a market for that. That's encouraging. Is a market you know, in America, or is this something that's happening worldwide? That's a good question. I think it's happening worldwide, but I, but I haven't traveled in the last year, so I, I I don't know. I'm mainly immersed in uh, immersed in in, in, in American. So, I, I don't so, know the answer. So that. the goal is Probab so probably though, because I would assume that the that the Facebook dot Brazil is probably the biggest purveyor of news mm -hmm. in, in Brazil. But so the goal is to have a place like Facebook. I can come on. I can go. Okay. Where, where you know that a everything's been been if not vetted story for story, but it's been pulled in by smart people. Okay. That we've got a network of contributors who who will also say, hey, here's why the story is important. Mm -hmm. Or here's mm -hmm. so the top comment is actually going to be by somebody who knows something instead of your crazy Uncle Fred who is high on your feed because mm -hmm. you liked his his pictures at at, at, at his daughter's wedding. Um, and and then you'll have a little bit of ability to say, hey, give me more yeah. or less of certain types of things. Now, part mm -hmm. of that will be watching you to see what you click on, hmm. right? just like Facebook right. does. And, and so we only have a few creepy. more minutes, sure. but I want to know, because I got your report today sure, sure. Oh, on looking top. back on 2017. Right. What do you think in 2018, what do you think is going to be the greatest news that, that oh. if you could think That's the fun thing about news, though. We don't know what's going to happen. I know. So, you know, so I don't know is the short answer to that. Um, um, what are you looking, what are you keeping your eye on the most, put it that way? I mean, I, I mean, look, the Trump thing has been the most, the most interesting presidential first year we've had in a long time. Um, we had all kind of assumed that that would calm down a little bit, and it certainly hasn't showed any, 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 uh, any, any, uh, any, any, any nod towards that. So I'm, I'm, the politics will be interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I think um, what Erin is asking is, should she buy or sell her cryptocurrency <laughs> for Bitcoin? <laughs> That's what she's really asking. That's Let's huge, be honest. That's a huge story and a massive conversation happening all over. I, uh, it's a very uh, selfish place. Crypto, <laughs> yeah. crypt, no. crypto goes up, crypto goes down. Yeah. I actually think it's a smart thing to get 5% of your, of your net worth if you want to and put a little bit into Bitcoin, a little bit into Ethereum, and a little bit some there, and then put it in a sock and come back in a year. But you'll freak yourself out if you go because right. it's going to double and it's going to yeah. go to ten percent. I mean, it's going to fly all over. But I think that more people are going to put money into that this year mm. into, into a closed system mm -hmm. and therefore it'll be worth it. Uh, Great so, advice. Yeah. Great. So that's the only real prediction I have. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really, really impressed with your work. It's beautifully done, and I'm I'm going to be looking for it because we have to research all the time. I don't know where to go, yeah. and there's so many different. Well, we started off with it with with the morning. So if you go to the court report, mm -hmm. oh, excuse me. Yeah. That's what we call the, that's what we call the yeah. newsletter. If you go to lacourtnews.com, it talks a little bit about what we're doing, and 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 it's and it can sign you up for the, that morning email, which and is which is basically a two minute brief of if you didn't jump into the news all day. And mm -hmm. we try to keep it in the in in, in the middle and, and try to keep it. Since the first day I met you, Ken, I subscribed and I wake up with it Monday through Friday, oh, and, okay. and I must say I truly enjoy it. I feel more well versed on what's happening. I feel like it's completely unbiased. It's a right. very good, just general understanding of topics that are very relevant to mm -hmm. what's happening in American well, society you. right now. Thank so you. thank you for that. I really well, do appreciate it. So we'd like it. you to do one just on LA so that we can just yeah. get <laughs> Someday. <laughs> so, and you don't have to do any research in the morning. You <laughs> right. can't yeah. So um, we have to take a break and we are going to be coming back. Do you want to introduce Maria, tell us a little bit about what we yes, get Yes, we have Maria Felipe coming in. She's part of the New World Library family. It's part of my publishing uh, family there. Um, she has done everything in her life. She's been an actress. She's a boxing announcer for a while, a TV host. And now she's got a great book called Live Your Happy. It's all about how to love your life and love yourself. So we're going to right. talk to her when we come back. Yep.